Hey guys, it's Ariel. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. I hope you guys are all doing well. Today is going to be another video on pickpocketing in Paris. It is rampant this summer. And the reason why I want to talk about this again is because my younger sister actually visited me in Paris from Canada last week. It was like her first trip to Paris as a young adult. And on her second last day after like a solid nine days of no problems, um, she was out exploring with a friend in a very touristy area and got nailed three times by pickpocketing scams and tourist traps. So I wanted to share her experience today because this specific incident isn't something that I've ever experienced because I live here and I don't necessarily go to the extremely touristy spots that first time visitors might go to. So I think her experience is shocking and interesting and I'm hoping that by sharing it, it will prepare you guys for your trip to Paris or even Europe in general, to be honest. This summer, it just feels like the pickpocketing and scamming is unhinged. So what happened to my sister is that she decided to go out one night and meet a friend of hers who's also visiting Paris from Canada with her mom. And they decided to meet close to the Eiffel Tower, the Champs de Mars, Tourist Central. And they decided to go have a little drink and a little apéro at a cafe. I will put the name of this cafe on the screen. At the moment, I'm the only review of this cafe, which is suspicious in itself, but I would highly avoid this cafe if I were you. But anyways, they met at this cafe, they ordered a little tapas and they ordered drinks. First of all, my sister was like, this was the worst tapas ever. I forget exactly what it was, but I think it was some sort of sliced cheese, Dorito chips, bread, like very subpar tapas. And for that little plancha plate and three drinks, the total bill was, I think, 52 euros. So my sister was like, okay, let's go. Let's move on. Let's go see other things. Let's grab the bill. So she asked the waiter for the check and he gives it to her and she looks at it and she's like, why is the total of this bill 62 euros? Because she knew exactly what she ordered. There was four things. She knew the price and she turns to the waiter. She's like, this is wrong. Like the bill should be 52 euros. And the waiter smirks at her and is like, no, there's 20% gratuity automatically added to your tab. That's how we do things here in France. You automatically have to tip 20%. And my sister, who knows me, who has lived here for five years, uh, was like, no, that's definitely not how things work. And she asked him to remove this automatic 20% gratuity from the tab. And he started insulting her. His colleagues started to insulting her. She like called me immediately after and was on the verge of tears because she was like, I don't know how it escalated so fast, but these people just started yelling at us and making fun of us. And it was just awful. And again, telling this story back, it maybe doesn't seem dramatic and like the worst thing in the world. But I want to tell you guys, if you don't already know, Tipping in France is not the norm. Occasionally, if you have an excellent server and you're feeling like you want to leave a tip, you might leave one or two euros on the table as change, but it is not the norm to tip. I very, very rarely tip. And I'm not just saying this as a consumer. I'm saying this as someone who also previously worked as a bartender and a waitress in France. So. I can confirm for you, it is not the norm to tip here. And if servers are not only guilting you to tip 20, 30% on your bill, but they're automatically adding it on your bill without asking you or without giving you the machine to input it yourself, it's just so wrong. And it's not just wrong, but then to have everyone, like all the servers in the restaurant turn around and yell at you is... I can imagine a really awful experience, especially if you're not fluent in French. My sister speaks French, but there's no way that she could or she would feel comfortable defending herself in French when a bunch of male servers are yelling at her. So she really called me very traumatized by the situation and I completely understand. And I just want to use this story as a reminder for you guys. Make sure that if you're visiting touristy areas, you're checking the bill. This has never happened to me 
ever in Paris, but that's because you would not catch me for a single second getting drinks or tapas at a bar by the Eiffel Tower. I know that the quality versus price is going to be awful compared to literally anywhere else that you can go in Paris. And I know that the service is going to be bad. I know it's going to be crowded with tourists. Like I just would never go to a bar like that. So if you are finding yourself having a drink, you know, with a beautiful view of the Eiffel Tower in a place that's very touristy, don't be fooled by these servers or these really crappy bars and terraces because it's not normal to be tipping. And I also want to use this to say to you guys, in the same sense that you expect French people to respect tipping culture when they come to the US or Canada, I'm asking you to respect the tipping culture of France because the reason that these servers are so unhinged and adding 20% gratuity automatically onto a tourist's bill is because they've probably experienced a bunch of American or Canadian tourists that have come into their restaurant and left a normal tip for the US or for Canada, which is like 20, 15 or 15, 20%. So when you come to France and you tip as you would in the US or in Canada, you're setting this weird new standard in restaurants in Paris and in France that shouldn't be there because it's not legal to pay servers or bartenders or anyone less than minimum wage. You're not getting the salaries that you do in the US or in Canada where servers are paid like $3 and the customer has to make up that salary in tips. That is not legal here. These servers are paid like at the least minimum wage. And on top of that, you do have a lot of different ways to earn bonuses. I remember when I was working at like a low level pub, there were ways to earn like 500 euro bonuses every single month if you were doing well, if you were greeting customers well. So that like $3 an hour nonsense that goes on in the US and Canada doesn't exist here. And on top of that, there are significant systems in place, like laws that protect workers, like very serious labor laws that protect anyone who works in France. For example, your employer has to contribute to your insurance. They have to pay half of your transportation costs. They oftentimes have something called a CSE, which gives you supplemental advantages. You get a ticket resto, which is approximately 150 to 200 euros a month in extra money that you can spend at a restaurant or in your grocery. So there are tons of benefits from your employer. Everyone is earning at least minimum wage. It is not the norm to tip in this country. Please don't come to France and leave these crazy tips because you're going to start setting a standard here and an expectation for everyone to start tipping 20%. And that's just not the norm here. And I also don't want you guys to end up in these situations where you've paid for your meal and within that meal includes like the server salary and these benefits, like the restaurants are priced accordingly to how they pay their servers. So there's no need for you to add an extra tip. So again, I don't want to be setting this precedent in France and I don't want anyone to feel like they're getting scammed. Like my sister really felt attacked by these servers and guilted by these servers and just that shouldn't be happening. So that is a scam that I've never experienced in Paris that I wanted to share with you guys. And on the same day, there were two other scams that occurred and I've kind of already talked about them on my channel, but I thought I would briefly mention them again just to reiterate that they happen and to encourage you guys to avoid them. So the first one happened when my sister wasn't there to her friend and her friend's mom. They were approached by a classic pickpocketing, pickpocketing scam situation. They were approached by a group of women with clipboards wanting them to sign a petition to help deaf children. And so, you know, they were eager to sign the petition. They wanted to help these children. And then as soon as they signed the petition, they asked the mom for money. And she was like, okay, I, I have 10 euros that I could donate to you. And then her daughter signed the petition. And then they asked, not even asked, they forced her daughter to sign the petition. And um, the mom was like, well, the only thing I've left is a 50 euro bill and I can't just give you a 50 euro bill. So they literally made her go to an ATM machine and waited with her while she took out money to pay them for this 
absolutely fake cause. You guys, these are not real charities. These people are scammers and pickpocketers. Like the fact that all they got from her was 20 euros is a miracle because what they also do is while you're signing the paper, while you're distracted, they will slip their hand into your pocket, your purse, they'll take your phone, your wallet. Like it is just bad news bears. If anyone is approaching you for any type of money or to sign a petition, like you, you shouldn't be speaking with them. You shouldn't be stopping in the streets to support this. Like if you want to donate to a charity in France, there's ways to do though. You know, there's the Croix Rouge. You can do a quick little Google search to find a charity that you want to donate to. But people coming up to you in the middle of the street in groups, like they're often groups of women with clipboards. This is a scam. Please don't sign their paper. Please don't give them money. I just don't want you guys to get robbed. And then the third and final scam that happened to her uh, while my sister was there is after the restaurant, they went to go sit on the Champs de Mars, you know, enjoy the view of the Eiffel Tower. Totally a nice, normal thing to do. It's a great place to picnic there. Um, but they had a gentleman come up to them. Um, I want to say offering them, but it definitely was more forcing them to buy a very, very cheap bottle of wine. Like I'm talking maybe a three euro bottle of wine that he had in a little cooler and he wanted them to buy it for, I want to say 30 euros. It could have been 35 euros, but definitely more than 30 euros. And um, I can understand that when you don't speak the language and you're a tourist and you're just visiting a country, this can be a very overwhelming and kind of confusing situation. You don't want to do because at first they said no, right? And that's the right thing to do. You should be saying no, that you shouldn't be getting scammed, you know, 30 euros for a three euro bottle of wine. And also it's illegal to be selling things like that. Um, you know, you have to have a business, you have to pay tax. You can't just buy a bottle from a restaurant and, or buy a bottle from a grocery store and then sell it for, I don't even know, a thousand percent markup. Um, so yeah, the first, at first they started to say no, but then this man was following them and following them no matter where they went, he would follow them and insist they buy this bottle of wine. And this is honestly a tactic, you guys, because most tourists, my sister and her friend included, will pay because they feel vulnerable, they feel scared, they don't want to be followed. So they did end up buying this crummy bottle of wine for 30 euros. And it's just, again, it's just crummy because is 30 euros the end of the world? No. Does it suck to feel like you were taken advantage of? Does it suck to feel followed? Yes. So if this happens to you, it could be beers, it could be water, it could be wine, it could be people wanting to give you friendship bracelets. I don't know. There's people trying to sell things to you all over the place in Paris. If you don't want something, be firm. You, you can be firm. You don't have to gently, kindly say, oh no, I'm not interested. Be firm. No, thank you. And if they continue to follow you, leave me alone. I don't want to buy your items. I will call the police. Like, no one should be forcing you to illegally buy merchandise from them. I, I feel like I'm just so heated about this, but I can just imagine how awful my sister and her friend and her mom's and her friend's mom must have felt, you know, feeling like they had to dish out all this extra money for no reason, right? Like they didn't want a three euro bottle of wine at the Shaw the Mouse. They just wanted to look at the view. I think as well that the fact that these Three situations happened within a span of five hours is very telling of the tourist experience in Paris. If this happened to my sister and her friends like on one day, I can't even imagine if you're staying in Paris for let's say two weeks and you're doing, you know, the classic things, the classic touristy things, the Louvre, the Champs de Mars, the Eiffel Tower. Like I can't even imagine how many times a day you're going to be bothered to buy things. Just make sure you guys are, you know, standing firm that you don't want to sign things. You don't want to buy things. And I think a great way to combat this as well is it's okay to do, not even it's okay. It's nice to do the popular things. You know, I do enjoy going to the Tour Eiffel once in a while. I do like museums like the Louvre and the Orangerie and the Jardin de Tuileries. Like those are nice experiences, but don't be afraid to venture out into other parts of Paris that are a little bit less touristy, you know? You, you might find that you'll have a better experience even just having a casual 
Parisian, you know, style day where you are living the life of a regular Parisian, not in the very densely tourist areas. So I, I can tell that I'm rambling. I, I hope this will help you guys plan your trip. I hope this will help you guys be prepared for when you come to Paris or other cities in Europe. Let me know if you guys have any questions down below. Let me know or share your experience as well if you have had other really crummy experiences. I think it's really good to share this information so that everyone is more aware of what could happen to them and ultimately how they can better protect themselves and their money and their belongings when they're traveling abroad. So that is all for my little ranty video story time. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video. Thank you.